Welcome back guys. So I got this piece of furniture at Dollar Tree for $1 and you do get what you pay for. They're pretty cheaply made and they're plain, but there's lots we can do to make this look a lot better. To start, I placed this piece of furniture in the microwave so the glue would release and it would be easy to dismantle. I did char my piece a little. I put it in for 30 seconds in a 900 watt microwave. You definitely want to exercise caution when you do this because it can start a fire. Here I'm just repairing a piece that broke, clipping it while the glue takes. My plan is to make this piece of furniture smaller so it's more versatile and it takes up less room in a miniature space. This is just the first step because now that my um, drawer front's smaller, the top and back have to be made smaller. But the sides will stay the same because I'm not changing the depth of the table. I'm only changing the width. I'm using a pencil to mark the width of the front of the drawers plus one leg on either side. I added about an eighth of an inch to each side to the right and left of the legs to account for the tabletop overhang. I'm using a miter box to trim my tabletop. I don't actually like this tool very much because the saw cuts into the plastic. I would recommend getting a metal miter box if you do spring for one of these. I'm cutting the little line I drew to signify the overhang of the table and this will be the final width of the tabletop. I'm flipping the tabletop over and using the old bottom as my new top because I don't like the way the edges are curved. I'll be using my X-Acto knife to make the tabletop look like wooden planks, so I need the 90 degree edge. The emery board didn't work very well for removing the glue, but the paint scraper worked great. I also scraped the glue off of the legs, so when I reassemble it, the pieces will fit together tightly. I've already cut my drawer front, so now I need to cut the back since I made this table more narrow. The back ends up being the same width as my drawer front, which in my case is 2 inches and 3 eighths. The bottom of the desk fits into a channel on the back of the desk. I'm cutting my bottom panel at the same width as my drawer front and back. Here comes the really fun part. I'm using my ruler to mark out different widths of boards. I decided on three boards for the top of my table. The table top is about one and a half inches deep and I'm using my pencil to mark half inch wide boards. I do the same on the other side and then I connect the lines. Here's how I turn my lines into boards. I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut at an angle on one side of the line, and then I flip the blade and cut at the opposite angle on the other side, kind of like a V-shaped channel. And when you remove the piece of wood, you end up with what looks like two boards that are butted together with a small gap. I use the same technique to cut the ends of the boards, where two boards would meet. I used a pencil to figure out where I want my boards to be on the back row, whether I want two or three. I decided on three. There are lots more details to add to make these actually look like boards. So right now I'm using my X-Acto to indicate some cracks in the ends of the boards and some nail holes. I used a brand new X-Acto blade for this. I would actually recommend using a push pin or something else to make the little fake nail holes because I ended up bending the tip of my X-Acto blade and then it was harder to cut the little V-shaped channels. You can do as many or as few of these as you want. I want my boards to look really rustic so I'm adding one or two at the end of every board. I'm using my X-Acto knife to take off the hard edge so these look more rustic. I did this on all four sides. To add even more character, I'm going to use the end of my X-Acto blade to press some grooves into the surface of the tabletop. Here you can see a comparison between the smooth boards and the ones that have grooves. I finish it up by making all the boards groovy and then I start cutting some wedge shapes on the sides. I want this tabletop to look like it's made from multiple pieces of wood, so I'm cutting these little wedge shapes on the edge to make it look like this is the sides of the wood meeting just like how I cut on the top to make it look like the ends are meeting. I used my X-Acto to make the legs look older too. I'm using some watered down paint to stain my wood and I tested it on the back to see if I like the color. I'm using a dry brushing technique to make the wooden tabletop look more weathered and old. The first pass I'm doing is with an ivory color. 
I'm doing another layer of dry brushing with a slightly lighter color. I used matte Mod Podge to seal it. I wish that Mod Podge would come out with something that's even more matte than matte because matte still has some sheen. I'm using some watered down black paint to strategically highlight these deeper parts of my table where I put some gouges and separated the boards. This dries a lot more subtle than it looks when it's wet. I'm finishing off with another ivory dry brushing. I'll be using paper to make the drawers look like they have raised panels. The drawer poles remove really easily with just some pliers. I cut a strip of some scrap paper about a quarter of an inch wide. I cut the rectangles too big and then I trimmed them until they looked right. I want these pieces of paper to look like wooden drawer fronts, so I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut some texture into the paper so it'll kind of look like wood grain. And then I sand the front and edges with a fine emery board. Now our drawer fronts have a completely different look and all we did was attach some paper. Now we're all about that base and we'll be painting the pieces that go on the lower half of this desk. I mix some brown paint into some green paint and I'm using this to paint all the pieces. I want this piece to look old and I'm also gonna force some shadows by just adding some brown paint. I'm just taking some paint and doing a light coat. This isn't a full coverage coat. I still want a lot of the green to show through. I used a combination of wood glue and hot glue to assemble this table. I used the hot glue so the pieces will hold right away and I used the wood glue so it would hold over time. I think if I was doing this again, I would use tacky glue instead of the wood glue because the wood glue was so liquid it was oozing around and tacky glue doesn't really have that problem. Now the table is assembled and it has this empty spot on the top. I kind of think it would look cute as a planter, so maybe I'll do that someday, but for now I'm just gonna glue the top on it and make it into my desk. The time has come to put some knobs on these drawers. A lot of people will take a glass seed bead and put it on a sewing pin. Then you trim it so it's shorter and glue it into a hole or bang it all the way through the drawer. The simplest method is probably just gluing a bead to the front. You get different looks based on how your bead looks. I'll be using these little knobs that I designed in Tinkercad and printed with my resin 3D printer. I'll be painting these gold, but I like to have a black base on gold if I want the gold to look a little more antique. Then I finish with a coat of gold. I'm brushing on some brown chalk pastels for some added character. I chose to attach my resin knobs with super glue, but you could also use tacky glue. I really love how this is looking, but I'm going to do one more thing and just hit it with a little bit of white dry brushing to brighten it up a little bit. 